I want you to picture for a moment exactly what your life would look like if you were a millionaire. The truth is you would have a lot of the same concerns, consistently working hard to grow as a person and develop fruitful, loving relationships all around you. Your greatest concern in life would still be your health and the health of those around you. There would be one main difference though, and it's an important one. You would no longer have to worry about money. You would have the freedom to do what you wanted, when you wanted. You would have control. Financial freedom is the freedom to be able to make choices. The choices about what you do with your most precious resource, your time, who you spend it with, and where and what you do with it. I want you to open yourself up as we begin to talk about what it takes to become rich trading. Traders are often very concerned with how much money they can make and how quickly they can make it. And each day in each trading session is approached as almost the improbable or impossible. The reason I want to share this formula with you is because it's very important to have the correct mindset, the mindset of an investor. And it's important to focus on this formula for the bigger picture. And this is going to help you to be able to execute, which is what you need to do in order to achieve your goals. You need to be able to execute. So let's take a look. Starting with a $3,000 balance. How do you get there? How do you achieve your goals? Where are you starting from? If you're starting with just a $3,000 balance today, and you are committing to making for the next five years, regularly, yearly, another $3,000 deposit, what is that, like $260 or so a month? Go ahead and, and take a look and then, and the rate of return. You know, holding Bitcoin, what do you think you could do? What do you think you could achieve yearly? I think the average rate of return annually is something closer to about 120%. Take a look at some of these numbers. 2017, 1300, 2020, 300, that's 2019, 87, and 2018, 72. These two cancel each other out. You're looking over four years, you know, 1600 divided by four. You're looking at 400% a year. There you go. Mean annual return, 400%. You're showing the percent change for every year into Bitcoin. You know, it's a couple of down years. 2022, right? You know, Good chance it's a down year as well. You know, that's what I'm expecting. Not being invested, you know, whether that's worth it to you during these bear market years, it could have a significant change in your overall accumulation. That's for some more advanced stuff. So you can see, even if we did experience something like drastically diminishing returns, you know, instead of 400% over the last four years, maybe we're looking something forward at like 200%. But even if we only get 70%, what happens if you use something realistic? What happens if you use something like a 30% return over the next five years in Bitcoin? You're looking at taking a total deposit over five years, $18,000, and growing your account to $46,000. That's only all over five year period, but it's also with a 30% return. I think that I, well, I personally expect to achieve over a 70% return annually in Bitcoin over the next what? 10 years, absolutely. So let's take a look at that. Let's make that 10 years, 70%. I think underestimating greatly over there. We'll see, we don't know. I think it's safe. I think it's safe to work out my plan using 70% expected return in Bitcoin over the next 10 years. And then you're taking that $33,000, you're turning it into $2 million. Now $2 million is comfortable. You could basically buy whatever you want whenever you need it. You know, really very comfortable. But the thing is, when I first started doing this, I did this with 11 years. It was an 11 year plan with three having events. And if you really want to plan this out correctly, starting today, you could go ahead over the next 11 years, expect to have three more having events. Next one, you know, it's every 210,000 blocks. Next one, you know, estimate 20,024, 20,028, 20,032. But the thing is, is the bull market happens the year after the halving. So you're going to want to make this a 12 year plan, 70% annual return. And now you're looking, you know, total deposits over those 12 years, $39,000, $3,000 a year. You're committing to this plan, to your plan, to your investment plan. And then you're looking at, you know, $5 million. If we hit our ex expected 70%, we don't, I mean, it's an, anything can happen. Understand your risk and what your risk is before you make any investment. And do not invest any more than you could afford to lose. But, but make sure that you make calculated risks. 
Is this a calculated reference? Now, if there was a, just the 85% annual return in Bitcoin over the next 12 years, you would be looking at something, you know, $15 million. That's from here on up, you go on borderline ridiculous for a 12 year plan. But, you know, 70%, 12 years, next three halvings, you're starting today, $5 million is, is rich. $2, $2 million, you're definitely comfortable, no question about that, but $5 million, I would say that it's a great plan to have in place. I think it's foundational, fundamental, that anyone beginning before anything else should have this plan in place. And then you could go ahead and leverage different investments. Why does it matter? If we are experiencing diminishing returns, then we wanna be following a roadmap, a guide that is giving us that clarity that we could position in and out if you're just buying Bitcoin and holding it for the next 10 years, you don't have to do anything. You could walk away. But if you're trying over those next two years while you already have that fundamental plan in place to acquire as much Bitcoin as you can and doing it in a very calculated risk averse way, then it really matters to understand these price movements. 150 days. That's a small time frame to be looking at and considering for this type of investment. The 2012 cycle, you can see here in 2013, peaking higher. This is 11X, an 11X, 7X. Are we gonna see something like a 9X, something in the average of the two? As we've seen up until this point, this cycle has been an average in volatility to the upside. It's been an average of the two cycles in volatility to the downside. And as far as consolidation and sideways so far up until this point, it's been an average of the two. Will the return also be a 9X? If I can get it, I want it all. I will take what the market gives me though. I mean, I think price says everything really, doesn't it? You know, and it's such a, it's such a significant price move. It comes off of a dip and then it moves so fast it's not going to be something that you're going to miss. Yeah. No and it's having the, it, it, it's really sort of seeing that as early as possible. Yeah. That's why I think that's probably the, you know, the biggest event to happen. By the way, as we, as we begin following price action, I saw it this morning on the live. So I was, I was looking at this. I don't know if either of you saw it, but mm. I've spoke about the four step at the, at the top that happened during the both previous cycles. You could see it clearly here as well. That's also a sign, I believe, as we're in the blow off top, as we talked about, you know, some people like to exit afterwards on the way down. This for me is the signal over here, the price action that I, if this is occurring again, there's no question I, after the one, two, three, four, on four, I'm exiting. If we're seeing that unfold in real time, that's going to be a strong signal. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, and on four is, is the exit When we talk about the king of crypto, we're of, caught, of course talking about Bitcoin, the rising tide that lifts all boats. We're going to talk about it all though today in our second to last public live stream. When I say all, we're going to talk about Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano. People wonder, Jordan, are you going to help us out, get out the top? If you're exiting the top, are you going to be there to give us a clear signal? You could see from the video today, the intro today that a few weeks ago I put together, it's to make sure that everyone has that lead they need into this cycle top over here. There's no one that should not be prepared. Everyone should be prepared. Everyone has here on this history of this channel, right? Everything they needed for success in life when it comes to the markets. What has happened, what has transpired over these couple of years is absolute. It's a gift to my children. They will be watching it to get their financial education. Good morning, everybody. I hope you are doing well. Good morning to all the moderators. Thank you so much for helping keep us all so focused for everything that you give. Good morning, CTM. Great, it's Taco Tuesday. By the way, for sure, we're gonna be taking a look at some head stack uh, as Bitcoin is trading $49,000 $49,280 looking quite bullish over here after the breakout of the most important trend line in crypto. Let me go ahead and just, you know, give you a little bit of a refresher of what's going on. This most important trend line in crypto was drawn after you saw a price break that $50,000 level and dump in the middle of May. 
as soon as that occurred, right and quick, I drew this trend line and I said, listen, things are very unclear. I mean, we knew they were unclear before the dump. We knew they were unclear once price came out of this V shape and then came off because that's not how price makes that mid cycle low. That's not price action out of the mid cycle low. We knew the model was just letting us know something's not right. And I said, hey, listen, everything's unclear until we break this line. Here's where we broke the line over here. It's a it's a higher probability and a strong one that the that the low is in over here mid cycle. Now, if you notice this morning the headlines, you see the Chad Mike my, my, Michael Saylor, Michael Strategy bought another third three thousand nine hundred and seven Bitcoin. Average price forty five thousand dollars. You can see that he was not trying to time the market. He was simply leaning in mid cycle, buying the dip. It's a big deal over here. Another $177 million bringing their turtle, total purchases now to almost $3 billion. That's $2.9 billion at an average price of $26,769. Micro strategy sitting on a nice position here. Hey, you think they're going to sell? Bitcoin's what? Trading at $50,000. They've doubled their money. Do you think they're going to sell? <laughs> Buying the dip mid-cycle is a Chad move. No question about that. We bought the dip, right? We we bought the dip. That was done multiple ways. That was done with spot Bitcoin. You know myself, I made a purchase at $39,000. Like Michael Saylor, not trying to time it. And then you saw me take another uh, acquisition at $33,000. That was the first time that I added to my Bitcoin position since we all positioned in prior to the having front running the having together on this channel. And then you could see that once we broke out into the bull market over there, we were trading this thing like crazy, trading this, stopping Bitcoin, May the 14th, Bitcoin at $50,000. Yeah, it's time to get neutral. No, I'm not selling my spot. But then when spot came off, massively took that as an opportunity to buy the dip. If you saw on the channel, the video that was put out over here on August the 4th and 5th, it was right before price broke the most important trend line in crypto. And we were going, or I was, I positioned in over here, right? With a risk reward, roughly 50 to one, that's just going into about $90,000. That, that is, that's just going into about $90,000. Do you think Bitcoin has the chance in 2021 to reach $100,000. It's about 50% off of that right now. Do you think that's possible for Bitcoin? By the way, uh, that's all, I'm sorry, it's 100% from where it is right now. It'd be 100% gain. Bitcoin in the last month is up 66%. It's just getting started here, in my opinion, as it breaks out mid-cycle. We've held this opinion the earliest and the longest. We have not wavered throughout the year. Uh, as Bitcoin has gone ahead and done Bitcoin things and the markets have gone ahead and done, you know, things of the market. By the way, do you think I'm looking to sell over here? You know, up massively, my, you know, my risk was down th whenever the stop loss at the, at the end of this swing low. Do you think that like, I'm going to, no. Do you think I'm going to exit at $90,000 or do you think I'm pushing this thing to see if we get something like $160,000 diminishing returns or are we going towards our projections, our projected cycle peaks? That seems to me to be the most probable uh, scenario that plays out. We're going to be doing it together. Um, all right. Where else are we? How are we starting this off? Would you, by the way, at this particular time, would you buy big, would you, would you borrow money? Michael Saylor, by the way, the majority of Michael Strategy's purchases have come from raising debt. And then just go ahead and buying Bitcoin. I myself have talked about, and when I did it, people thought I was crazy. Back in September and October, borrowing against my Bitcoin holdings to purchase more Bitcoin. I did that all the way between $10,000 and $13,000. And then I did it again at $20,000, right? Here we are at $50,000. $50, and I said, you know what? I'm, I'm in such a position of strength that I have no need uh, to borrow against Bitcoin holdings until the coming bear market low in the, the coming, you know, in, in 2022, uh, that's what, at least what I'm expecting the bear market low things obviously could change. There are some people out there who are so lost, like 
a lot of people here at CTM are, are really strong. We call it CTM strong. A lot of people in the beginning of the video, we talk about the plan to help you create wealth, right? A lot of people here in CTM from the, from the work they've done over the last year and a half, they've already made life-changing money. A lot of, I'm not talking about one or two, I mean a, a plethora, a lot of people, right? I believe by the end of this year, if things play out according to what our, our uh, what our plan is, that that's gonna be significantly more, and those people that already have gone on to do some amazing epic things are gonna go on to obviously do some, you know, get, you know, quote unquote, mm, how do we highlight this? Legendary things. Creating generational wealth is legendary. Do not let anyone tell you anything different and you can do it. You can do it. If you missed yesterday's stream, I think it was one of the best ever, period. There's no question about that. I told my wife and family, I'm just loving the direction that this is heading on, hidden over here. Uh, perfect calmness and laser focused. It's a nice environment. I love being and spending the time with all of you all the time. I prefer to spend that time in just that CTM environment. There's no question about it. It's an echo chamber that, that I could do my best work in and that's where I wanna be. All right. Bitcoin, let's take a look at some price action, not only on, on Bitcoin, we're gonna look at Bitcoin, we're gonna look at Ethereum, we're gonna look at Ethereum, Bitcoin, and Cardano. From there, we'll see whether or not we look uh, at anything else. But we're gonna start here on Bitcoin, right? You could see this line over here. This line, the support is very important. Since the breakout of the descending wedge, we were right there and called it as it occurred, right? A lot of people at this point we're picking up, this was the first repair that CTM picked up, by the way. It's dated out on our uh, our thesis. It's been a while since I pulled it up. Let me just, just show you what I'm talking about over here as we get going this morning. Being that we are in public, I have to ask you, if you have a second, please go ahead and help support my work in the channel. Smash the like button. Let's get going here today, especially if you are watching this on the replay. Please take the moment to go ahead and not only smash the like button, but add, add something in the comments below that you know that I'm going to want to respond to and we can pick it up over there. All right. Where are we? Back on the charts. Good morning, CTM. Good morning, CTM. All right. This is all beautiful stuff. This is all beautiful stuff. <laughs> so Tom, I'm so grateful, right? For, for all the moderators, for all the supporters, for all of you, for everyone, for everything that we share. CHR, we're streaming every day. You, the schedule is posted on the community tab for this week. This week, the only public streams are today and Thursday. Thursday's the last public stream. There will be many of you, unfortunately, who, for whatever reason, uh, following at this particular moment for the last couple of weeks from afar, have missed what is happening over here. I, I hope that you're able to get up to speed. We'll do our best, but we're really focused on, uh, you know, what we do and just continuing to do it smoother and better. That's all. Let's get back over here. We're looking at this descending triangle, right? There was the first repair. That's why I bought up this document to show us. We did this in real time right? That was, it was June the 28th. As it first occurred, CTM said, since we broke down, all right, this is the first repair that's taking place. It wound up being the only repair that was needed. You can see that the lowest price point over there, 28,500 on June the 22nd. That was the stop loss for this particular trade. Price came down and tested lower. As it was doing it, I said to everyone, hey, listen, you're trying to make money selling into support. That doesn't seem right, you know? Instead of playing this $5,000 range, maybe you wanna wait for some further clarity. That clarity came with the descending wedge highlighted in yellow. Price broke out on Twitter. We showed you the breakout. We showed you then also that we had a retest and a resumption off of it. Beautiful stuff. And then as that occurred, said, hey, we're going into what probably be with the next important part here where the bears could put up a fight. That would be the most important trend line in crypto. Price came there rapidly. You could saw on Twitter, we had the, the schismatic where I drew it like this. 
and then I drew another line like up here, right? That is what is playing out to date. Here you can see, there you go, this is perfect. Here's the first line, and then here's the trajectory of the second line. And if this holds, that's what will transpire. And that will be price making new all-time highs and taking them out. It's, is it, does it stop at the all-time high, right? Now, b before we get to the all-time high, yeah, we could we could end wave one. We talk about at the beginning of this video why the next 150 days were so important. And we talk about a double wave, wave one, and then wave two into that liftoff point and that parabolic blow off top. It's, this could be the end of the first wave if at any point in time we break below this trend line, this dotted yellow line. That's why it's there. That's why it's yellow. Because if that were occurring, I think that we're headed towards a pullback. Now, that pullback might be something that we saw over in this area uh, just recently. This is January, where it was short. It was short in duration. It lasted, you know, about uh, three weeks, 20 days. And it was about 30%. And then, boom, a next, that could be the start of wave two. You know, we don't know how it's going to play out. We're not necessarily trying to time it that accurate. I think breaking it down, you know, we're looking not only to have the most accurate uh, navigation of Bitcoin's four-year cycle, but within the phases, the bull market phase, the bear market phase, the accumulation phase, to have the greatest accuracy as possible within there. Lots of models are vague, helpful, good, like stock to flow, but it is it is very vague, right? It's rough, broad strokes. We're trying to uh, get that down as accurate as possible. Where we are right now, if you want to go further, I consider this black diamond CTM. It's not for the normal people. When normal people hear that, for whatever reason, they think that that includes them. Like when you see a sign that says experts only, you could die, you know, you could get wrecked. You have to respect that. And how do you know if you're an expert or not? If you're constantly making money in the markets and you know that you know how to manage your risk, obviously you're an expert. If you don't know that, obviously you're not an expert, you know, stick to like, again, the easiest way to trade this, as I said from the very beginning, was simply buying Bitcoin at the break of the bull market and then selling at the cycle peak. For many and most, that is the best way that they can, within their ability, make money during the Bitcoin bull market, right? Uh, listen, yes, you can make significantly more money trading. If you could do that or work towards that, that's obviously going to greatly in, uh, increase your efficiency and performance, right? Your bottom line. But if you're not there yet, then what are you doing? This is an opportunity of a lifetime and you don't need any leverage whatsoever to take part in it, to participate in it. It's why the Bitcoin strategy, the fundamental strategy is explained at the beginning. Because it, it, what a shame it would be if all of a sudden, four years passed, 10 years passed, and you did not go ahead and accomplish legendary things. If you let this moment slip away from you because you were like, like bright lights got you distracted. You were like, oh, I could buy an NFT. What? What? I could, you know, what's this altcoin that's going to 100x in, in how long? What? What? You know, and unfortunately, you know, uh, anyway, I, I hope that most people are able to benefit from what is needed to do over here. It takes discipline. It takes thought and it takes a bit of awareness. It was brought up this morning on Twitter. What three words would you tell a young trader in their 20s? And I answered, hold long term. Had I in, in, had I, in my early 20s, had I held on to, to my Facebook shares, to my Google shares, I bought both of those IPOs and I sold them thinking I was a hero. You know, I sold them probably within, within a very short time frame thinking that I was a hero. Could you imagine I held on to both of those for the long term? Do you think that someone in their early 20s today buying Bitcoin, you know, maybe Ethereum, Hey, Ethereum is obviously uh, this enormous force to be reckoned with that is growing and growing, but there are risks. There's no question about that. Those risks are different than with Bitcoin. There was a very interesting interview uh, on Studio. Hold on one second. Let me see if I can. Here it is. On Studio 1, 1.0. 
right, on Bloomberg. I used to watch this a long time ago, Studio 1.0. It's a lot of traditional finance stuff and interviews. Uh, and I saw this clip. It's only five minutes with uh, 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 Vitalik. And interesting, at the, the last question asked of him is something about the future of crypto and what 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 Vitalik could focus on. I'm not going to play because I don't have it ready. What he focuses on is Bitcoin and Bitcoin competing versus money. I mean, and that's why Bitcoin is king right then and there. Bitcoin is the only cryptocurrency competing as money. It's the killer app of Bitcoin, right? Um, so where are we? We got to we got to we got to take a, a slight detour over here and play some head snack on this Taco Tuesday so I can get a breath and keep going over here and take us back to the charts. We're going to be looking at uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum and Cardano next. Analyzing the charts and projected targets within the margin. Find the flow, sip the matcha, and wait for the waves to come in with lobsters. The kind hearted Jordan Fosters, working smarter, not harder to move the markers. On his way to conquer, trading and investing, drinking the coffee while reflecting on the blessing. The markets are not crashing, the prices might be slashing. Just to pretend they're in fashion, take a like button, comments, and smash it. Boom, boom, Jordan in the room, grab the bull by the horns, or do the moon. Flow from the plateau, make the play. Boom, boom, it's a taco day. It's a taco day. All right, I love head snack for the win, no question about that. Uh, look, a lot to unpack, all right? Let's just get, let's just take a second here, get focused. Uh, just reading some of these beautiful comments over here. I'm going to miss that part the most, right? From as far as the public live streams, uh, you know, it's, I don't have to tell you how special this journey is with all of you. There's no question about that. And when I say that, like, I want to take everyone with me. I, I have laid out the fat, not only the foundation, right? We have we have a detailed roadmap and way to do it for each and every one of you and everyone. And that, you know what? If you have the opportunity to go back and watch every single video on this channel that we've done, by the way, you can find Conquer Trading and Investing on LBRY. Uh, there are some videos that were deleted a month's worth uh, back in April of 2020. It's some important stuff as the market at that point, what that's where that's that was the difference between the pros and the experts and the macro bros. There there were a few who got it right and got it right as early as possible. I could say that we did that here. It was exceptional the work that we've done here together and uh continue to do to this day. So it's been it's been extraordinary. There's no question about that. What we've been doing this past couple of weeks or this past week with the private CTM live streams, they're much better. They're simply much better. That's where I wanna focus my time and my energy right now as we get towards uh, the, the end of this cycle peak over here and then start preparing for the bear market because there's still a lot of work ahead of us. There is a lot of work ahead of us and there's gonna be a lot of people at this cycle peak with a lot of emotions. If you're not CTM strong and CTM trained, and understand CTM principles and the strategy. There, the, you know, you're just a liability, and that's why the division at this point, and 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 choosing to take the path uh, elsewhere, as well as for my own health. Right, getting up at 5:30 uh, every day is, with six kids. By the way, is is exhausting, and uh, it, it's just much better to be able to perform at peak performance. If you are uh, doing multiple things, we talked about that a lot in the beginning of CTM. That including, uh, most importantly, your health and including eating well and exercising and sleep is one of those components, right? So it's, you know, it also gives me the opportunity of having the highest quality of life, of taking uh, my children to school, you know, and that's, that's just, uh, you know, absolutely amazing. So let's get going over there.
let's take back a look at the charts. Let's jump into the market. Bitcoin now coming off about well, one and a half percent. Said on Twitter yesterday, I spoke about that first uh, sell impulse or that next sell impulse taking place. Let's jump in and take a, a close look at it over here. It was the break of this trend line. And at that point, I said, all right, well, that's that's a sell impulse. Now, we know that each one of these have been faded ever since the most, uh, I don't want to say the most important trend line in, in crypto is broken, but that's when they've been faded recently, the last two that we've watched. We were looking for them to be faded, right? Just observing the market structure as it's unfolded. This one over here did a couple of things, right? After fading, then the next trend line over here, you could see that broke overnight, right? So now you have two hedges on because the first hedge, the sell hedge, again, this is a little bit of, of experts only. It, you should be, which is why I did the situational awareness in the beginning, right? Like this is a very short term trend line to be focused in on. If you are, and the question came up from Sandra, Jordan, would I be taking, is there a possibility that I would make profit on the first wave before the pullback, right? I think that from here on in, right, from from the mid-cycle low to the cycle peak, that's that's one um, like breakdown of the cycle that, that people should be focused in on. And I think that's like a short time frame to be focused. I know a lot of you bought the dip. I know that a lot of you positioned in with leverage off of the dip, right? Now, even at this point, $50,000 Bitcoin, I myself am going to buy Bitcoin and I don't really know what the price will be, right? Uh, it Look, it could be, it could be $5,000 higher or lower by the time I do it. We will see what happens. Uh, it's a purchase from here to the cycle peak. It's done on debt, by the way. Is that a good idea? Would you be take would you be taking on debt at this particular point mid cycle to buy Bitcoin? You know? So the way I look at it, it you know, in different jurisdictions, it's different. Uh, in the US, if I take a purchase at, at $50,000, and then like price breaks this trend line over here and comes back down and even comes as far as maybe testing the most important trend line in crypto, I could go ahead and take a loss on that trade. And then that loss will, you know, will go, will help, will help offset some of my, my gains. And then what I could do is just buy back over here. So I kind of view it as like a free trade. Uh, there's always risk, understand your risk. All right. But the way that I'm looking at that and Obviously, you all know I have engineered multiple strategies for this bull market that are just overlaid and played out within each other. This would be another one of those particular strategies. Uh, and, you know, the, the upside is obviously just exit cycle peak. And then, you know, if I don't have the opportunity to sell at a loss first to offset some gains and then buy this back, right? Uh, in, in cryptocurrencies, in Bitcoin, it's something that you are allowed to do within the tax law. Right. So then, at you know, selling over at cycle peak and then going ahead and paying short term gains on that one particular trade by choosing which lot. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I feel like to not do it would be like um, would just be like I was a bad steward and not, you know, what am I going to do? I That's how I feel about it. So that's why I'm doing it. And uh, anyway. So I think that people should look at it like this, this, this wave one, is it possible this breaks down over here? Yes, right? Sandra, I would not be taking any profit if that were to occur, right? Now, if this thing, the wave one would to go uh, take out the new all time high, uh, and then, you know, is there a possibility I would take some profit? If this thing went up high and fast, if it went further than I expected it to go quicker than I expected it to go, if we were seeing price come up towards like that seventy to eighty thousand dollar range, I think that I would be looking and following a trend line break to get out and to lock in profits, and then I would be looking to accumulate back in lower. Yeah, I would take some off the table, Sandra, if the market allowed me to do so. If the market allows me to do it, that's because price came up hard and quick. Uh, otherwise, what I'm going to do is, you know, maybe for wave two. If it comes up hard and quick again, otherwise, you know, I'm comfortable with with looking to go cycle peak. And I think that's a pretty short time preference to be focused on. The risk is to the upside right now that we've broken the most important trend line in crypto. 
I do understand that once price makes new all-time highs, uh, there's going to be a lot more FOMO. Uh, if you waited for price in 2013 to break its all-time high, I mean, you missed the majority of the move, right? So what, what do I mean by that? Let's just make sure everyone understands. Here's that wave one. Here's where price breaks up. And then you can see price puts in another 323%. But from the time it broke the most important trend line in crypto, price was up 1,000%. So you missed the majority of the move. It's not just there. If you did the same thing, it was a little different in 2017. Here's the peak over there. But I'm going to show you the difference, right? Because this was a less of a consolidation. It was less of a peak. Price had a 554% gain off of the last all-time high. Out of the most important trend line in crypto, it was a 700%. So this time, this cycle, being an average of two of how long it consolidated, here it consolidated a long time before breaking that most important trend line in crypto. Then you had wave one, wave two, into the parabolic blow off top. Here, the consolidation in 2017 was for a lesser time. It was lesser in drawdown as well. And then you had wave one into wave two into that parabolic move up, right? This time, we're an average of the two. I'm looking for this to be an average of the two. You all know that because I have not wavered uh, since the very beginning, ever since we saw signs of that occurring. Now, originally, before the bull market began, obviously, I was looking for diminishing returns, $160,000. It's the, it's the easiest way to do the math when you look at the past cycles. And you can, $140,000, hey, that's mission accomplished. Everything that I set out to do during this bull market will be accomplished. Now, I don't think that's going to happen, right? That was done in 2019, right? But now I believe that we are seeing, because of the Uber Easy monetary policy, I saw that Heath on Trade Talk this morning or last night posted a video about whether or not the Fed is going to taper this Friday in Jackson Hole. I want to watch that. I want to hear Heath's thoughts on that for sure. Uh, my, my myself, I've been talking about that the Fed has been doing verbal intervention by talking about tapering mid-cycle. I think it accomplished its goal. I don't think that the Fed is in the position to taper. I don't think that it's going to happen right away. Yes, it is possible by the end of this year, by November or December of 2021, that the Fed has begun tapering. It'll probably be about 10% of its monthly purchases. I don't think it's enough to upset or offset the markets. Nevertheless, we're always watching, like a hawk, the Fed and uh, all, all their policies and how that could potentially upset the markets, cause any, uh, let's say, uh, break could break the system as it did in 2020. We talked about here on CTM as it happened in real time, as the Fed began in September of 2019 of actually having a problem in the repo markets. By, by the end of the year, it was supposed to be rectified and it was actually only getting worse. We were talking about how that could present a problem to the system and it's why we were riding that strong dollar for so long, right? Anyway, we're gonna keep doing uh, what we could do here together. Let's take a look, all right? Just wanted to make sure everyone has this framed. When I start talking about small time frames, I get I get like a little worried. It's going to cause people to start trading, uh, and I don't want them to do that. I, I I talked about the beginning to the end of the bull market as being best for most, and now in this video, I'm talking about from the mid cycle to the cycle peak as being like the next like shortest time frame that I would have anyone trade. Nevertheless, what you're watching occur over here now in real time on the two hour, it's just so you could see the market structure taking place. We had this trend. Jordan, you move the trend line. We always move the repairs of the lines. There's a video on this on the channel that's that's called how to trade out of a bear market. It was during the height of the bear market or the mid cycle shakeout. It was done over here in June if you want to go look for it and find it. It is an absolute masterclass shared public. Go ahead and watch that video and increase your knowledge of the markets today, right? So we saw this. This trade is valid right now. This hedge, it's a hedge because the trend is up. There's no question about that. Everything is bullish here on the structure of the market. If this dotted trend line gets lost, if we break down below it, the bullish structure of the market has lessened for sure. Now, it's still bullish above the most important trend line in crypto. And what we will be looking for a possible retest of that area.
that could take price down significantly down towards 37,500 from where we are today if that if that were happening right um where are we right now is it possible no i don't want to go there right now well maybe we'll do that tomorrow with just just ctm all right so that trade is open that hedge is open you know uh do you, what do you do with that listen if you know if you're doing that i'm not going to get into that right now what about on the upside right if you would have took last night the last uh, impulse to the upside right you could put on multiple trades multiple hedges that's stopped out that means that you're not looking for any type of long uh impulse right now and we have to go ahead and readjust this line this line now is going to be lined up from this peak to this peak over there and extended forward if we're going to see the bulls regain any momentum they need to break above that trend line for that to hurt that would be the first sign that is occurring all right we got the strong support over there right bears right now have momentum we're making lower highs and lower lows uh and that should be in real time as clear as day to everyone as it's been taught in real time over the last 24 hours let's look at cardano right cardano good is coming right into this trend line right now try if if i were in to a very short time frame trade in cardano and it broke this line I would be exiting this trade right now. Me personally, I understand that Cardano is very bullish above its yellow dotted line, right? This is its wave out of the mid cycle low and it's very, very bullish, all right? But at this point, if you're looking to lock in some profits, take off perhaps, uh, uh, whether I don't know if it's 15% or, or a third of your position or more or all of it, whatever you're doing, it's always safer to get back in after you see some type of repair to the upside, there's the line over there. If you exit this trade in Cardano and you want to, you know, you have that fear of missing out any move to the upside, you just go ahead and you place the trend line over there. And, you know, as long as you below it, you belong out of the market until you break back up to the upside. All right. What about on Ethereum? Wow. Karina, in the um, joint, in the, there has to be below for my, my training program and, and CTM course, a link in the description. Go ahead and click that link. The, the CTM course includes everything, the Discord, everything that takes place within the community, uh, all past videos and training videos, whether it's on Bitcoin, foreign exchange, how to trade price action, CTM uh, principles, strategy, and all the CTM live streams. Uh, the, the updates, the links as we go live are uh, sent in the Discord on the announcements channel. And then also they're sent by email. Go ahead and just and just register for the CTM program. All right. Boom, 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 boom. Ethereum, Bitcoin. Let's look at Ethereum first before we look at Ethereum, Bitcoin. Ethereum also coming down towards an important line. Is that perfect? So I just want to I want to share with you why I have this line. As you can see, it's slightly above the low here, and then slightly below that touch over there. That's why I did it. Now, of course, this is not the first one. The first one was over here, touching that low over there. That trade, right? That hedge has been stopped out, right? That trade has been stopped out. Once it's stopped out, you then find the next low, and you go ahead and you move it off like that. That's the next line of support that we're following on Ethereum. It's coming in and we'll be testing it perhaps today. You can see that uh, below that line. Is that a place to take profit on Ethereum? We well, you know how to do this and it's the best way you could do it, right? So I, anyway, uh, what about Ethereum Bitcoin, right? Interesting development on Ethereum Bitcoin. The first sell impulse, we covered this together on CTM was when, when uh, the price broke this trend line over there, that sell impulse is still on. And then you saw price break down outside that triangle and then come in for a retest and break down, resuming off. Now price is above that trend line. So this sell impulse is exited right over there and you're now long on Ethereum Bitcoin. So look for possible dominance to return away from Bitcoin and towards all coins over here. Now, you know how to manage that to see where you're wrong, right? How do you do that? 
right now you're waiting for the next it, by the way it gets complicated that's why it's called black diamond if you took this first trade and the sell is here i mean you you leave the trade open for maximum opportunity i wouldn't be selling ethereum i mean i wouldn't be selling bitcoin right now in 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 the bull market right what do i mean by that let me rewind I, no, no, I'm not even going to. I think I'm getting a little, a little complicated in advance. I don't want to do that in the general public. I'm not going to do that right now. We'll, we'll, we, I think it's a masterful opportunity to present a lesson. We'll do it tomorrow in the live stream together. All right, that's the advantage. Um, DXY, very simple. It is between resistance and support. The resistance over here is this channel resistance. Great video done January 4th on this channel. It's titled King Dollar, the DXY, and it talks about this particular trend line over there. We are now retesting it. If we break above it, then we're looking at a firmer dollar period, and we could go as high as uh, 97, 98 on the DXY, and that would be well within range between the next bit of resistance. If we break down below this trend line over here, though, this could we could see dollar weakness unfold and unfold quickly as a rejection of that strong channel resistance. That comes back if you want a deeper view at it. That's going back uh, all the way towards starting over here in 2011. Uh, the 10 year, by the way, is just in a holding pattern, it looks like, uh, waiting for probably what happens out of Jackson Hole. If we get a break of this green trend line at that point, I think we see yields rising and coming into what is the most important trend line in the 10-year yields. Uh, again, I'm saying it from the beginning. If, if, if yields start rising and they're rising because of inflation concerns, you're going to see Bitcoin in a hyper bullish environment and the potential returns, you know, I think, I think they'll be closer to that 9x we talked about. Uh, you know, a 7x in 2017 bull market off of the mid-cycle low. Uh, in in uh, 2013, it was an 11x. So we're perhaps looking for a 9x. If we're getting those uber easy uh, monetary conditions uh, and then we're seeing that's causing inflation, you're going to see Bitcoin acting as a, as a big hedge versus inflation. All right, I think I wanna just go ahead and make sure there are no questions that I left unanswered. So I'm gonna play some Honeymoon and then go ahead and take a look at what's going on with all of you. Brooke, Brooke, I was referring to Bitcoin. Bitcoin is the king of crypto. Like, you know, we know, we know it's a dollar story and king dollar when it comes to crypto, big, big Bitcoin is the game. But thank you for the, uh, you know, we, we do our best. No, I'll talk about that in one second. Thank you, Nick. I want to answer this too. I'm going to come back to this. Come back. The chair. Thank you, brother. question about it Marilyn the public streams it was a beautiful act of charity but you know there's no question that going private now is even greater it's, it's gonna have the potential the, the potential and capacity to affect more lives it's true it's true everyone has had the opportunity the opportunity is available to them uh, but listen change is good there's no question about that let's see let me pause the honeymoon let me pause the honeymoon so you, so you could hear what I'm saying, right? Um, boom. What else are we talking about? Um, would we consider creating a lower tier CTM member for access to just the streams? Listen, I have to, you know, it, it's, the, the value is immense, 
right? It's already priced as low. It doesn't even make sense to be priced as low as it is. Unquestionably, people have signed up for services costing tens of thousands of dollars and abandoned them once they found CTM. Uh, anyone who's going ahead and positioning themselves according to the work we've done over here, you know, maybe not, maybe not for the next, you know, until cycle peak, but you should be able to generate uh, enough money, no matter what you're starting with that, you know, the cost becomes insignificant. I hope that's what you're doing, but yeah, it's, it's, it's already the values is beyond, right? Uh, yeah, you can, if you can't make the live streams, which only, you know, I would say a small portion, one fifth or less could make the live streams, right? So the people contributing in the live streams when it's CTAM only is just all instructive and all on point and all on signal. There's no nonsense. We're just way more tuned in and dialed in together. It's much more educational, right? Uh, you could watch them on the replay, of course, and not just for that day. You could watch every single past, uh, you know, video you want. You have access to it all. How far do I see Cardano going? I don't know if it's true or not. I, I, I I'm interested to know. Did, did Charles Hopkins say that he sees? Cardano going to $150 this cycle. I don't know. I don't know if that's true or anything like that. I heard uh, people saying that $50 uh, dollar Cardano was highly ex excessive. It would have a $2 trillion uh, market cap if that were the case. And I just don't uh, think that Bitcoin is, you know, are, are you talking maybe a cycle out? Is that a, po a potential possibility? Mm, I don't know, you know. But Cardano right here at $3, let's call it, you know, does Bitcoin have from where it is, is sitting right now, a potential, you know, 5X? Yeah, it has a potential 5X, $250,000, right? So would the, then Cardano have a potential 7X from here, you know, 20, $21? Yeah, I mean, that would be a speculative bubble. It wouldn't make sense, and but it could happen, you know, for sure. Uh, look, it could even go higher than that, but it will be a speculative bubble. It's going to be massive, the the alt, the alt season that we're going to see. Once we reach the mania phase on Bitcoin, Bitcoin making new all-time highs, Bitcoin taking out $100,000, the mania is going to be crazy. Cardano is going to do, uh, I, you know, I imagine some crazy things. Now, at any particular time, you could see the authorities particularly in the U.S., come against the project. And it's very easy. All you need to do is you saw it happen with Bitna BitMEX and you saw the founders and the team, you know, uh, taken into custody. And could that happen with Cardano? Yeah, it, you know, there's no question about it. There's a risk, right? Could it happen with Ethereum? Listen, we all saw the infrastructure bill and uh, we don't know the future of 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 POS and listen, it's all complicated. There's a reason and it's a strong one why I am Bitcoin centric and fo focused on Bitcoin. I think Vitalik does the best job of explaining why I am when he talks about that, you know, let's, let's listen to what he says in his own words. Running the metaverse, uh, but I, I guess we'll see how it goes. You've got a lot of people out there, a lot of people who are trying to understand cryptocurrency, who are placing their bets. What's your prediction for Bitcoin? Does it replace the dollar? Does it ex exist in, in 50 years or is it something else? And then similarly, what's your prediction for Ethereum? Because a, a lot of investors are choosing to hold both or one or the other. You know, I think uh, replacing the dollar completely is unlikely, um, just uh, because like there's things that the dollar provides, like uh, price stability, for example, that Bitcoin is uh, not going to provide. Like I think even in a theoretical world where um, the U.S. dollar collapses, like even then, I think uh, Bitcoin is not going to be able to provide the level of like, stability that users and businesses expect to be able to set prices in. Um, and in that kind of world, like, we, we would need something else. Like, we, like it could be decentralized stable coins. It could be something else, but we'll see. Um, so, but at the same time, I think cryptocurrency can still have a very powerful and important role alongside uh, existing uh, currencies. Gary, thank you. Gary, thanks. I did, Charles never said that. He's saying, I don't know where that came from. 
you know. I also see crazy things about uh, Raul's and his price predictions for for Ethereum. Someone's saying that that, uh, and I saw the video of of it was on Savvy Finance of Valtic saying that he thought there was a, a 10x in there. I don't know or understand why these guys are giving price predictions or whatever they're given. Uh, we're going to focus on the work that we do here. I find it to be the most accurate and the greatest edge we could give ourselves in the markets. So that's that. And then you could just see, I mean, just just look at price coming off that mid-cycle low. We were working on putting together this, this hive mind model together here at CTM for this year in 2021, you know, saying that, hey, listen, you know, lining these things up from, from the halving makes a lot of sense until price takes out that previous cycle high, then lining these things up, you know, and, and seeing how they play out from there makes the most sense until we get to that mid cycle low. Ian has confirmed as we get towards the lift off, that's the next vantage point to line these things up going into the close. And you can see that so far, I mean, we're on signal. There's no question that CTM has given us, we had this expectation Right. And a lot of people could not see it. And then as price is coming off that mid cycle low, a lot of people could see what we were seeing ahead of time right now. Let's see if that vision, that laser focus continues to guide us. Thank you, everyone, for being a part of it. You know, I hope you have a beautiful day. May God bless you. And I'll see you all Thursday. Thursday will be our epic last public live stream. It's going to be a party. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, and I'm looking forward to tomorrow. I'll see you all uh, on the inside. Have a beautiful day, everyone.